When performing all of the wand SDA injections, make sure that the instrument is turned to the SDA mode. This will produce a flow of anesthetic of one drop every two seconds, which is below the patient's pain threshold. In order to initiate the flow of anesthetic, hold the foot pedal down until the voice says cruise. At that time, take your foot off the foot pedal and the instrument is now on cruise control and it will continue this flow rate throughout the whole injection. When initiating the aspiration mode, hit the foot pedal all the way to the floor and then release it. Aspiration will then occur. During aspiration, everything is going back into the tubing. If you're in a blood vessel, you will see blood in this area. And the aspiration takes about six beeps. The aspiration is used to check whether you're in a blood vessel and also to remove the needle during, after you produce as much anesthetic as you need to for the injection and so that you will not get any anesthetic into the patient's mouth. When you have arrived at the proper spot, the instrument will start to give you lights and sounds. These lights go from red to yellow and then to green. You do not need to get to green in order to have perfect anesthesia. So when you hear the lights come on, hold the needle in place and do not put pressure on the needle. When you want to take the needle out after you've delivered as much anesthetic as you uh, desire in the proper spot, then go into aspiration and during the middle of aspiration, after the third beep, take the needle directly out of the mouth. You should see one or two drops come out of that needle. That is perfect. But if you see a steady stream of anesthetic coming out or 10, 20, 40 drops coming out of the needle after the aspiration ends, then that anesthetic did not go into the bone and you will probably not have sufficient anesthesia. The AMSA injection is a very comfortable injection that's going to anesthetize multiple teeth. It has three different stages. The first stage is to pierce the tissue. The second stage is to penetrate through the palatal tissue to the palatal bone. And with, we're at the injection site of the palatal bone to deliver the anesthetic comfortably. So to start the injection, we find the bevel of the needle and we use a pre-puncture technique. We lay the bevel of the needle up against the tissue. And then with a the cotton tip applicator, we put pressure on the back end of the needle and on the tissue. We then start the flow rate by hitting the foot pedal, holding it down until we hear the voice say cruise. When the voice says cruise, we take our foot off the foot pedal. Now we're on cruise control throughout that whole injection. So after about 10 seconds of pressure on the back end of the needle and the tissue, we then take away the cotton tip applicator and with a finger rest, all I'm going to do to penetrate the tissue is to rotate the needle one, two, three. It just barely pierces the tissue, possibly half a, a millimeter to a millimeter, and the patient doesn't feel that. Now, before we start to penetrate through the palatal tissue, we should let some anesthetic go into the tissue. So we just pause for five or six seconds. During that pause, I would rotate the needle so that the needle is going directly to the bone and the flow rate will be towards the premolars. So after about five, six seconds, then I slowly, slowly, slowly start to mow the needle through the palatal tissue to the bone. It may take me eight or 10 or 12 seconds to hit the bone. What we have is an anesthetic pathway. We know exactly how much anesthetic is coming out of that needle. It's one drop every two seconds. So if we move the needle through the tissue very slowly through a pre-anesthetized tissue, the patient won't feel the penetration of the needle. So we just rotate the needle slowly, 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 and penetrate slowly until we hit the bone. When we hit the bone, we're in the third stage of the injection, which is the, the easiest stage because the instrument is doing all the work. All I'm doing is holding the needle in place and allowing the anesthetic to flow 
uh, throughout that palatal area, you'll see ischemia. Uh, how much do we deliver? It depends on the drug that you're using and on the patient. If we're using lidocaine on an adult patient, I usually deliver a full cartridge of anesthetic. If we're using articaine, we would use no more than one half of a cartridge of anesthetic. If we are working on a child, those dosages should be cut in half. So using lidocaine on a uh, child patient, you should use no more than a half of a cartridge. When you've delivered as much of the anesthetic as you need, you enter into aspiration by hitting the foot pedal, releasing it, and it, in the middle of aspiration, which is about six beeps, in the middle, after the third beep, you take the needle directly out of the mouth and then um, hold it away from the patient or put it on the patient's bib. The uh, injection uh, duration is about an hour and a half, approximately, usually more. And it, the onset of the anesthetic is usually within a minute or two. You're going to anesthetize from the central incisor all the way through the mesial buccal root of the first molar. All the palatal tissue is completely anesthetized. The buccal labial tissue is anesthetized from the second premolar all the way through the central on that side of the injection. If you were to use uh, this injection bilaterally, now you've anesthetized 10 teeth. And what's really interesting about this injection is, of course, the patient's lip and face is completely normal. You have not anesthetized their lip and face, but you have buccal and palatal anesthesia and labial anesthesia and, of course, pulpal anesthesia. So also with this injection and then a simple PSA injection behind the second molar in infiltration, now with two injections, you've numbed the whole quadrant both the palatal and labial and pulpal tissue are anesthetized. The PASA is another injection that's very valuable and will anesthetize six anterior teeth. To begin this injection, we use our pre-puncture technique. So we find the bevel of the needle, lay it on the injection site, which is just lateral to the incisor of papilla. Do not inject directly into the papilla because that tissue is very, very dense and may cause difficulty with the patient. Instead, there's a little groove just lateral to the papilla and that's our injection site. We use the pre-puncture technique by putting the cotton tip applicator on the back end of the needle and on the tissue, and we're putting a lot of pressure on that. And then we start our flow of anesthetic by hitting the foot pedal and hearing beep, beep. The voice says cruise, you take your foot off the foot pedal, and now you're on cruise control once again. After about 10 seconds, more or less, you could take this away. And then after 10 seconds, you just rotate the needle one, two, three, to just barely pierce the tissue. Then I pause. We allow the anesthetic to flow until we see the pupilla get blanched, get white. At that point, now we are going to enter the nasal palatine canal by rotating the needle vertically and slowly, slowly penetrating through the tissue until we reach the injection site. The injection site will be approximately one half the length of this 30 gauge, one half inch needle. When we reach the injection site, we must aspirate. To aspirate, we hit the foot pedal, release it, and the beeping starts for six beeps. If we are in a blood vessel, we'll see blood in this area, right, th right here. And if we have a negative aspiration, then we go back onto cruise control and deliver the proper amount of anesthetic. The dosage depends once again on the patient. If it's an adult patient, I normally use three quarters to a full cartridge of lidocaine or no more than one half cartridge of articaine. If it's a child patient, then you should use one half of that dosage. So 
of, of lidocaine, no more than one half of a cartridge of anesthetic. If there is still anesthetic in the cartridge, to remove the needle, enter and to aspiration once again by hitting the foot pedal and releasing. And after the third beep of aspiration, take the needle out. So it's beep, 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 out. Put the needle on the patient's bib or on the bracket table. The duration of this injection is approximately an hour and a half or longer. And the, the onset is fairly immediate, maybe after a minute or two. What's neat about this injection is you're anesthetizing six anterior teeth, all the palatal tissue related to that area, and the labial tissue is anesthetized, but the patient's lip and face is completely normal. This is an injection that is very useful for cosmetic aesthetic dentistry in the anterior region on both adults and children. The intraligamentary injection is a very useful injection for anesthetizing any tooth or multiple teeth. Uh, maxillary teeth have two injection sites, the distal buckle and then the mesial buckle. On the lower teeth, we go to the lingual. So on lower teeth, the injection sites are the distal lingual and then the mesial lingual. On lower anterior teeth that have short roots, only one site is needed, usually the distal lingual of these four incisors. This injection is different than the traditional PDL injection in that we're not going to use force or pressure to force the anesthetic down the PDL space to the apex of the tooth to get a short duration of anesthesia. Instead, we're going to put the needle into the sulcus and move it down until we reach resistance and then let the anesthetic flow into the bone around the tooth. So in order to do this injection on maxillary teeth, we find the bevel of the needle and approach the tooth at about 45 degree angle. We put the needle into the sulcus and then start the flow of the anesthetic by hitting the foot pedal and waiting till the voice says, Cruise, take your foot off the foot pedal. Now the instrument is on cruise control. We move the needle down until we reach resistance. Holding the needle very, very lightly, we will feel the bottom of the sulcus. At that point, you stop and wait about 10 to 15 seconds until the DPS lights and sounds begin to uh, start. When we hear any of the sounds, we stop and hold the needle in place. How much of the anesthetic do we deliver it depends on the uh, tooth that we're working on and the drug that we're using. If you use lidocaine, you would put half a cartridge on the distal. And then when you're ready to remove the needle from the tissue, you hit the foot pedal and go into aspiration. Aspiration starts and it's six beeps. In the middle of aspiration, you take the needle out of the tissue and see how much anesthetic comes out of the needle. The DPS lights and sounds are telling you that you're in the proper spot, but they will not tell you how much pressure you put on the needle to maybe block the flow of the anesthetic from going into the bone. We can determine that by watching how much anesthetic comes out of the needle at the end of the aspiration. So once again, if I delivered, let's say a quarter of a cartridge of articane or a half a cartridge of lidocaine, I then hit the foot pedal all the way to the floor, release it, aspiration starts. Beep, beep, beep. One, two, three, take the needle directly out of the mouth. And then as the aspiration finishes, watch and see how much anesthetic comes out of that needle. It should be a drop or two, that's perfect. Where'd that anesthetic go? It didn't come out, it went into the bone. You're gonna have really good anesthesia. But if you take that needle out during aspiration, and when aspiration finishes, you see 10, 20 drops, you see a steady stream of anesthetic coming out of that needle. Then that anesthetic did not make it into the bone and you're probably not gonna get sufficient anesthesia, at least for the duration that we would expect, which is approximately one hour with the profound anesthesia on the tooth and on the tissue. On the maxillary teeth, what about the palatal tissue? What about the palatal root? 
we don't have to do anything. If we put a half a cartridge on the distal, then put the rest of the cartridge of lidocaine on the mesial, that tooth is anesthetized for extraction, endodontics, crown, anything you want to do. There's no need to do anything on the palatal tissue and on the palatal root. That area is, is also numb from that one injection. On the lower, this handpiece is really too big to get into somebody's mouth. So what we do is we tend to break the handpiece short. As you can see, there's tubing that comes out of the channel in the one handpiece. You pull that tubing out all the way down and you'll see a little notch about this area of the handpiece. Place the tubing away from you and then just snap the short. Now you have a short handled needle that gives you access anywhere in the mouth, okay? The next thing I do is find the bevel of the needle, that flat spot, and bend the needle just slightly, maybe five degrees towards the bevel. So you can see that there's approximately five, 10 degrees of a bend towards the bevel, which allows us to see where the bevel is in the mouth when we're doing the second stage of the injection. So if I was to numb this lower first molar, I would approach the tooth holding this very, very lightly like a endophile. Approach the tooth at 45 degree angle from the distal uh, going across the tooth. So the flow is, is going diagonally across the tooth. Hold this lightly and then as you start the flow of the anesthetic, you move the needle down until you reach resistance. Then after 10 seconds or more, you're gonna hear the, the lights and sounds of the DPS come on. Hold the needle lightly. Do not put pressure on the needle, trying to make the lights go uh, past yellow uh, or red. Do not put pressure on the needle to let the lights go all the way to green. That's probably going to be blocking the flow of the anesthetic so it does not drip into the bone. You hold the needle in place and you deliver the amount that you uh, uh, want to give. And normally we recommend a half cartridge of lidocaine. And if you're using articaine, one quarter of a cartridge of, of articaine. When you hear the sound of the instrument telling you how much anesthetic you've delivered, for example, one quarter you hear beep, beep, and gong. That means one quarter. And beep, beep, gong, gong means a half you need to pull out. So once again, when we want to pull out of the tissue without getting anything into the patient's mouth and determine how much pressure we put on that needle, we hit the foot pedal, release it. It goes into aspiration. During aspiration, after the third beep, we take the needle directly out of the tissue. So it's beep, 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 one, two, three, take it directly out, put it on the patient's bib, put it on the bracket table and watch and see how much anesthetic comes out as the aspiration cycle finishes. If it's one or two drops, that's perfect. You're gonna have excellent anesthesia. All the anesthetic went into the bone. But if you see 10, 20 drops of steady stream of anesthetic coming out of that needle, then probably you're not gonna have sufficient anesthesia, at least the anesthesia that you want that should last approximately an hour. So in the next time, just do much lighter placement of the needle and holding of the needle in place. So then you go ahead and deliver the rest of the lidocaine, if you're using lidocaine, onto the mesial of the uh, mesial lingual of the first molar or any tooth, except lower inc incisors, as I said, and deliver the rest of the uh, cartridge of anesthetic. If you're using Articane, then you deliver another quarter of a cartridge on the mesial. Approximately 20% of the lower first molars get innervation from somewhere else, maybe from the long buckle or myelohyoid nerve. So I typically would give another quarter of a cartridge on the bifurcation area of the lower first molars only. Just one quarter of a cartridge of either articane or lidocaine should knock out 95% of lower first molars. What about if you wanted to anesthetize two molars next to each other? 
If you anesthetize the distal of the second molar, the mesial of the second molar, then skip the distal of the first molar. Do not double dose that area. Go to the mesial of the first molar. Okay, again, at 45 degree angle with bevel towards the tooth. Now you've anesthetized two teeth. And then I would also suggest delivering another quarter of a cartridge onto the buccal bifurcation of that lower first molar. That should numb up two teeth. To anesthetize a full quadrant, you could anesthetize the second molar with two injection sites, full cartridge of anesthetic. Skip the first molar and then go to the second premolar, two sites, distal, then mesial. It's very important to always start on the distal and then go to the mesial. Now you've anesthetized the whole quadrant. Sometimes you might have to give the supplemental anesthesia, maybe 10 drops on the uh, distal of the incisors. Sometimes you don't need to. This is how we can eliminate doing infiltrations and eliminate doing the blocks because we can use single tooth injection that's very, very efficient. It's very uh, profound anesthesia that lasts about an hour. You can do any procedure that you would normally want to do on this tooth and the patient would leave without their lip, face, or tongue being anesthetized. This is important to the patient. If we want to do what we call a crestal technique on an edentulous area, all you need to do, let's say you want to give an implant, uh, place an implant or recover an implant. Let's say on this third molar, which is the edentulous area, any area we're talking about, Go directly to the bone, then deliver a half a cartridge of anesthetic and you would get all the anesthesia that you need. And you'll find that you're using much less anesthetic and the hemostasis is much better than the typical traditional ways of anesthetizing an area for implant surgery, which is either lingual and buccal infiltration or mandibular block. Remember, this lingual bone is very dense the buckle bone is very dense, but the crest of the ridge is very, very porous. So if we just put the needle into the tissue directly to the bone, which takes a second, then you will get all the anesthesia that you need for implants placement and implant recovery.